Welcome back to stage four. Gateshead to Kendall here on the Oval Energy Tour of Britain. You can see Matteo Trentin's Mitchelton Scott team on the front defending for that green jersey. One minute and 46 seconds. Now is your time gap back from your two leaders, Axel Domon and Dylan Van Bala. Rob, it's not quite the pattern that we were maybe expecting this morning. Certainly not the one that we were telling everyone back at home was likely to happen. Just uh, the two, two going clear at the moment, but uh, it's a quality pairing. It has to be said, Dylan Van Baal. Thanks for the one. It's uh, it's just um, yeah, it's it's all settled down just a little bit uh, earlier than expected. Justin Scott taking control of the race. They're obviously happy with this. I think. Uh, Part of it is possibly when you look at the profile, it just it strikes fear into so many riders um, because of the, because of the nature of today's race. I think it's one of those with with the, with the sort of profile that we've got. If if today was kind of one of those, you know, the shorter stages they put in the Grand Tours, 100k, 120 kilometres, entices a lot more a lot more racing. But because it's kind of 50 to 70 kilometres longer than, than that, it just just puts a little bit of fear in, I think, to, to one or two of the riders. That said, later on, it really will start to start to kick off. That's that's the thing. There is so much uphill. There's a lot of descents as well, and that that can also put put people off a little bit with the technicalities of uh, of the uh, of the racing. Got to got to keep on top of it. You've got to take control and be on your guard all the time today. Our two leaders, 47.1 kilometres to go. Snod's edge is about 12 kilometres in. Let's just uh, chat a little bit about yesterday. Dylan Groenewegen, uh, his stage win at the top of Grey Street, ahead of Matthew Vanderpool, David A. Chimelai. Looking at today and the, the riders we expect to be up here today, we. We almost did Dylan Groenewey get a massive disservice yesterday, didn't we? Because we were saying this is we look we look at Grey Street, we look at the, we look at Dylan Groenewey and we see the sprints that he wins, and then he just absolutely smashed. He's got it, the form, yeah. He, he, he's got the form, hasn't he? You, you you would you would expect it to be more more for for his teammate, and and when you look at the other other guys, Van der Poel was kind of the out and out favourite going into it. Okay, he came second. Came for a long way back, actually, but when you when you look at uh, Grunewald, especially the overhead shot, he was the only one in that shot. And uh, fair play to him. It, it obviously goes to show that uh, the, the form that he's got and the, the power that, that that he has as well, and the power that he can hold up to that drag. But it was the position, and I think his his team actually did the job for him early on and uh, going into that final bend and that kick up towards the finish. Because we saw Jos van Emden and we did a massive turn on the front to, to help bring back that breakaway. And then Mike Turnison as we swung right. And this is the thing, you know, you're, you, you've done a lot of lead outs in your time. It's almost a kind of symbiotic relationship that you start to develop with your final lead out man. Cav has it, has it with Mark Renshaw. And it just the way they came out of the corner, Mike Turnison, just a little subtle move to the right, opened the opened the, the double doors nice and wide for Dylan to come through. And then you saw behind that washing machine effect of Matthew Van der Poel and trying to come through and battle through. Um, but by that point, he already had you know, a couple of metres and it just grew and grew. That, yeah, that, that's the thing. It's the, the lead-out man, it's a different skill that you have, different skill set between a lead-out man and a sprinter. The, the sprinter is obviously the one with the real kick and the punch, and whereas the lead-out man, they need to be able to deliver the power, be able to, to position themselves within the peloton and negotiate themselves through, but in a smooth manner. It's almost like you've got to remember, you're, you're almost a caravan. <laughs> if that's uh, if I'm allowed to say that, but um, you, you've got to remember that you're towing something essentially. So it's no good getting yourself and squeezing yourself through a gap, and then seeing another one to the left or the right, and, and all of a sudden making this dramatic move to the left or to the right. Because you've got to remember, you've got a rider behind you, and you, you so you've got to look after them, and you give them kind of plenty of space to be a nice, smooth rider 
and have a nice even delivery of power and the, and that's the thing it's 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 being able to drop them off and but keep them there on your wheel as long as you can or as long as the sprinter feels that they want to be there because it's up to them as well if they if you come into the final few hundred meters your lead out man might go but if you see another wheel you'll just drop onto that and that's the thing it, it is a two-way thing and, and the 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 actual conversation that you have is very limited. It does have to be almost the fact that you, you don't need to communicate, you don't need to speak. It should become a sense of and, and become kind of more of a feel thing. Russ Downing's joined us in the commentary box. Morning, Russ. Morning. What did we were just we were just chatting about yesterday's uh, sprint finish? I know you, you know that finish into Newcastle. Well, uh, Dylan Groenewegen just again, as we said, he's just on phenomenal form, and, and we caught we. You know, I'll hold my hands up. We called, we called it wrong yesterday. Yeah, I think we did. We went for a more a more punchier sprinter, but he had some punch there. I think I just walked in as you guys were talking about the sprint there yesterday. There was a, a slight gap open. He went for it, and, yeah, off he went straight off the front, and no-one could hold him, really. We're looking at now, we, we talk about, and again, you, you hear everyone today, they're looking at this stage, they're talking about Matthew Vanderpool. We looked at yesterday, we were talking about Matthew Vanderpool. You know, he's again, he's such a phenomenon, isn't he? This this is this is the pressure that's that's going to come for him now. Um, everything, the way a, a road winds, it kicks up. He's, he's going to have this pressure now of, of expectation on his on his shoulders. Um, and for me, he um, he looks in this race at the moment in the place he should be if he want to if he wants to win the world championships in two weeks. He almost looks like he's. 